because you guys, especially with the university and the, and the market Monday, you guys have done some really great strategic partnerships. Um, whether it's where, with the university, I, 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 I saw um, him 500, um, my guy, shout to, to MG, the mortgage guy, um, you right. guys have worked with, you know, and so many others. One of the things, especially in our community and in business in general, people don't like to spread the wealth. And it seems like you guys have done a really phenomenal job about identifying key partnerships. Can you discuss with me and just help anybody else who might be looking in or, or listening to this on podcast form, how do you approach potential partners? How do you identify and say, you know, somebody like MG, who, who is a loan officer and so well-versed in real estate, he will be perfect to partner with us. And what do those partnerships talks look like? And what do the percentages look like? Yeah, um, I mean, MG is the only like official partner that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and he's our partner in, in EYL University. That was an easy conversation for, uh, I had that conversation with him at that time. He was starting something similar. Like he was starting like an online yeah. <laughs> academy for real estate. And we were starting, I'm like, it doesn't really make sense for you to do this and, and us do this. It would probably make more sense if we come together and, and combine and we, we become equal partners. And, um, you know, like I said, that wasn't really a hard conversation because he already knew the value and, and what we had. And um, it was like, all right, let's do it. It makes sense. Uh, everybody else is more so um, relationships that we've built and they're, they're not like officially partners with us, but, you know, we just leverage each other. So anything that we can do to help them, it's, it's not a problem. And, you know, they, we, most people that's come on the platform, we keep good relationships with because um, we've helped them by even bringing them on the platform. So now when we ask them for, for favor or we ask them to, you know, teach a class or whatever, it's never an issue um, because, you know, one hand washes the other. And, um, you know, if they need us for anything that we're here. So that's kind of been the hallmark of our, of our whole business model, even how we get guests. You know, we don't have a booking agent. We don't have a publicist. We just leverage our relationships with people that we know and um, nine times out of ten, that's how that's how a lot of these uh, guests come on Earn Your Leisure if we don't if we don't know them personally. So um, yeah, it's think you know working together, whether it's formal or or informal, is um, extremely important. And um, you go a lot further by leveraging each other's resources, brain power, and relationships. And that's pretty much been our business model. Yeah, I, I remember MG used to have the he had the slogan collaboration over competition. And so we wanted to embody that because too many times in our community, we don't see us working together. And, so to see, and to see us come together to do EYL University and to see all, all our alumni come together to help each other out is beautiful. Like we'll, we'll, when it doesn't just stop with us, right? We'll start to see like a Wall Street Trapper is now family with mobile homes, elite investors. So it's like a whole family of people that have come together in this financial literacy space to uplift the community. You know what I mean? Like we always live by that slogan, like my, me uh, lighting your flame won't extinguish my candle. And so like, it costs me nothing to help you, right? I'm trying, I wanna help you cause I don't know who you could help. Um, so that's what the whole movement's been about and that's what it's gonna continue to be about. Nice, nice. Have you, you spoke about you, you don't have a booking agent. How do you guys even choose your guests? Is, is it your audience that's saying, we want somebody from this particular industry or you guys sitting around saying, you know what? You know, you 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 mentioned the, the vending machines, which is a, a a very different type industry. Most people go and they they use vending machines every day, but they don't really think about that as uh who owns it, who owns the vending machines, or that is a revenue stream. There, how do you guys even determine who comes on the show and what industries you want to focus on? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a lot of times it's the eye test. Um, and we just always, you know, people re give us recommendations or we think of different things ourselves or, you know, somebody might say, this is a good industry. Can you get somebody in this industry? So there's really no set formula. We try to cover as many industries and as many different paths. Do some industries possible. work better than the other? Um, I mean, you never know. Cause it's like some, like one of our biggest episodes, mobile homes, we didn't necessarily know 
<laughs> that like vending machines, I knew that was going to be a big one because that was something that we had experience with those type of episodes. And by that time the episode came out, it was like, all right, we kind of know now something's going to be big or not. But trucking, we didn't know at that time that that was going to be big. Um, mobile homes, we didn't know that that was going to be big. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Um, you never know. It's like cannabis. We did a cannabis episode. It wasn't actually as big. So Spurgo too. Spurgo. Oh yeah, Perfect example. clothing, yeah. Um, that was big. So you never really know. I mean, sometimes you do have a, an idea, but um, ultimately it's just one of those situations. You just put it out and see what, what people are interested in. But we realized that especially those type of low start industries um, where are very popular, those are always going to be, you know, big episodes because it's something that anybody can get into. Anybody can get a vending machine. Anybody can get a mobile home. Um, so, you know, now we kind of have an idea of, okay, this is going to be big. Uh, but once again, you never know. What's up guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.